That is kind of like the E.T. theme song. And a little, little bit. bit of Star Star Trek yeah. in there. <laughs> I noticed that. Yeah. It's Weird Wednesdays. It is Weird Wednesdays. And this is kn- something new, and I'm yep. real excited about it. We um, Are we going to create the permanent theme song to Weird Wednesdays right here on the fly? It's Weird Wednesdays, Wednesdays and, and you, you know, know what that, that means. means. Sometimes it's space. And sometimes, sometimes it's beans. It's... <laughs> no. Nope. No. Nope. Sometimes it's space and sometimes it's aliens it's weird and... it's weird it's wednesday and yeah it's weird. i don't know we're gonna have to work on that one we are um and we're gonna talk about the kensington rune stones right, right after, after we this. snap our fingers are we ready to begin good morning my name is misty come on i it's time we would be honored if you would join us the greatest adventure of all time just become best friends. Yep. Come on, let's get in the character. What are you waiting for, huh? Oh, come on! And we're back. We are back. We are going to talk about the Kensington Runestone as yep. sent in from one of our favorite fans. Stacy Nathan. Stacy Nathan. Yep. Her so, address is. Nope. Her phone number is. Nope. Yeah, her blood type. Nope. Thank you, Stacy, for this suggestion for our first Weird Wednesdays. So this is cool. Stacy is a promoter rep friend of mine in the music industry. What do promoter reps do? She goes to shows and works on behalf of the promoter to make sure that the show goes the way that it's supposed to. Oh, cool. That's um, a cool job. But when she was in high school, she worked at the museum that hosted this. Whoa. And so she watched our Roanoke Colony episode... Croatoa. And texted me and said, oh my gosh, if you're going to make a theme out of these, you've got to do an episode on this thing, the Kensington Runestone. And I literally looked it up, read the first two sentences about it, Mm -hmm. and just went, you know what? That's our first Weird Wednesdays. Thank you, Stacey Nathan. I'm going to cold read this from runestonemuseum.org, which might be where (laughs) she worked. No. This is the museum that houses the runestone. Now. Oh, got it. Yeah. Uh, the runestone and the enduring mystery of its origin continues to be the hallmark of the runestone museum. This intriguing artifact was discovered in 1898, clutched in the roots of an aspen tree on the Olaf Omen farm near Kensington, Minnesota, 15 miles southwest of Alexandria. The runestone has led researchers from around the world and across the centuries on an exhaustive quest to explain how a runic artifact dated 1362 could show up in North America. Yes. So <clears throat> this guy, Olaf, was a Swedish immigrant mm-hmm. and he had a big field and it was in a largely rural, I hate that word so much, rural, 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 rural. <laughs> township of Solomon in Douglas County, which was later known as Kensington. Um, so there's an inscription on this big, gigantic piece of stone. He says that he found it in his field that he owned. Mm-hmm. So you can't really see it too clear. Well, I mean, I guess you can on that. Um, it's an inscription. It's got things written. Is it Latin? Well. Dun, dun, dun. Rural. 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 Anyway. It's just a hard word. It is. It's just not, it's not easy to say. <laughs> so it weighs 202 pounds. It's made of gray whack stone covered in runes. And it was allegedly discovered in central Minnesota. The inscription is said to be a record left behind by Scandinavian explorers in the 14th century, mm. internally dated to 1362. But there's been a big debate regarding the stone's authenticity. The scholarly consensus has classified it as a 19th century hoax Mm. since the time that it was first examined in 1910. Some critics directly charging Mr. Olaf with having fabricated the entire inscription. Yeah, that seems most likely. So they say, oh, no, you found this, you know, big piece of rock and you inscribed this stuff in it and said, look what I found. Look what I found. Mm -hmm. Um, however, the community around Olaf Ullman is still convinced of the stone's authenticity. They still think that Olaf 
found it and that that it is an actual relic. Yeah. In fact, as you travel around parts of Minnesota, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm reading this guys, sorry. Notice that many businesses use the rune stone or the Viking as an identifying symbol. Yeah. Uh, you'll begin to understand just how far reaching the saga is. Indeed, the name for the National Football League's Minnesota Vikings is a re- direct outcome of the fame of the Kensington rune stone. Yeah. Which most people would never know. Right? I didn't yeah. know that. Um, so he said that he found it on a small crest um, rising above a wetland. It was laying face down and tangled up in the root system of a poplar tree. Um, the tree was estimated to be about 40 years old. So that's a little confusing if something had been there for a few hundred years. Well, not really, because the tree would grow and its roots would grow around it. So that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was Olaf's son, Edward, who initially noticed the markings that were on it. And the farmer later said he thought that they had found an Indian almanac. So Hmm. like the farmer's almanac, but the Indians made this as something like that they would chip away at the stone as their own almanac instead of, you know, because they didn't have books then to write in. Yeah. (laughs) They had to do it in stone. Stone's a safe bet. Right. It weighs 202 pounds Mm -hmm. and it is made of gray sandstone. I said that already. Just in case. (laughs) I can't find any mystery about it, though. What is it well, actually Well, the, the mystery say? is when they get into whether it's real or not. Mm. Nobody still can figure out if it's real or not. And I don't understand how you're not able to... Like, we can figure out the age of basically anything. Mm-hmm. And, like, the... You know, the origin story to anything. Or do we just make yeah. those things up, too? And we just all agree on them and go, okay, yeah, we made that up and that we believe that that's, that's what it is. I think it is. depends on the situation. I think there's some things that we all just kind of agree on. Right. Um, well, why can't we just all agree that the, the guy found this? And Well, here's, a, here's a, a pro for it being authentic. Okay. For instance, organic material tests reveal the stone had been buried for about 25 years before Omen found it, suggesting the Swedish farmer may not be a hoaxer, according to Stein. Uh, it puts the Oman family back in Sweden, but it doesn't legitimize the stone. So if it had been buried for 25 years, which the organic testing says it was, mm-hmm. they weren't even in Minnesota. Well, and here, okay, so here's what's interesting too is, so this was during the time that the Vikings were traveling um, through Scandinavia. Sweden and Norway had some friction between them. Mm. And Olaf was Swedish. And... So there were different people that traveled here from Sweden and from Norway. And so initially it was the Norwegians who claimed that the stone was just a Swedish hoax and that there were similar Swedish accusations because the stone references a joint expedition between Norwegians and Swedes. So why didn't any of the Norwegians know about it, but the Swedes knew about it? Hmm. So, yeah, the Norwegians were the first people to call them out on this and say, no, we came over here, us Viking people, we all came over here together in this joint expedition, and how come you guys know about this stone, but we don't? They Hmm. thought that it was pretty coincidental that the stone was found among Scandinavian newcomers in Minnesota, still struggling to be accepted and that we're very proud of their Nordic heritage. Hmm. It was like, Oh cool. Look, here's something that you guys can look at us and like, think that we're cool and that we're, you know, like, so they all came over here and mm-hmm. clearly the people that were here already were like, ew, new people. We yeah. don't want to like you. Yeah. So the, the Norwegians thought maybe the Swedish came up with this as a, as a hoax to make the locals embrace them maybe and to like them. That's a possibility. Yeah. Um, do you, do you want to know what it says? I do very much. Uh, the text translates to eight geats. It's G E A T S. I think it's geats okay. and 22 Norwegians on an exploration journey from Vineland or Vinland to the West. Far to the West. We had camp by two scaries. Shelters. 
in one day's journey north from this stone. Okay. I mean, it's not groundbreaking oh, that's not stuff. It. Huh? There's more. That's all I got. We were fishing one day. Wow. After we came home, found 10 men red from blood and dead. Eve Marie saved the evil. There are 10 men by the inland sea to look after our ships 14 days journey from this peninsula or island year 1362. So basically it was like a little diary of like their journey. Like how they came to be and what happened when they initially settled. There's a second stone. What? Second stone found near site of Minnesota runestone. A team of Minnesotans who believe the famous Kensington runestone is authentic have found a second carved rock, which they say might have marked the grave site of the Viking explorers in the 1300s. J Janie Weston, a member of the seven-person Kensington Runestone scientific testing team, said she noticed a faint inscription on a boulder in May. Oh my gosh, that stone, it has writing on it. Kind of coincidental that somebody that works on this team finds another rock. Uh, because yeah. the stone bears Latin letters AVM, perhaps for Ave Maria, the team is calling it the AVM stone. Ave Maria is a traditional Catholic prayer based on Gabriel's visit to Mary. So, Ave Maria. Did you know that off the top of your head or are you reading it right now? I mean, I knew, first of all, the song Ave Maria is based on the prayer. I thought it was Hava Nagila. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to look up what Geats are because you use oh, the yeah. inscription of Geats. So the Geats, sometimes called Goss, were a large North Germanic tribe who inhabited Gotaland in modern southern Sweden from antiquity until the late Middle Ages. So basically, that's that's Gothenburg now in Jeez. Sweden. Um, so they were some Germans Jeez. that were a tribe, and Jeez. they took over a little part of Sweden. Jeez. So there were eight of them and 22 Norwegians on an expl exploration journey. You want to hear the pronunciation of Geats? Geats. I think it's Geats. 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 We, we Geats it. Yep, we Geats it. We're just Geatsing out on runestones today. Okay, so part of why a lot of people think that this is fake is because they did a study into it and they compared the age of the actual rock itself to and the weathering on it compared to the inscription and the chiseling. Mm. And so when they found it, the people that were doing the research on it looked at it and said, this looks like it was chiseled yesterday. Oh, There's wow. no weathering to the chiseling that's on it. It's mm. not as weathered as what it should be. If this was even done 50 years ago, there mm. should be, you know, some, some wear and tear basically on it. Yeah. And there wasn't. So that's what kind of made people in the very beginning go, mm, I don't know about this. You might be lying. Might be lions and tigers. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, also, another thing pointed out by a lot of skeptics is the lack of cases. So, <laughs> Old Swedish still retained the four cases of Old Norse. So, the way that it's written is not in tune with the timing of how it should have been written. And oh, the, they didn't type it the way they were talking. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Where, um, so what do you believe now that we know all this? You know, I think that there are a certain amount of things that maybe we don't need to have the answer to. Right. Like if Olaf did carve this himself and be like, blah, 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 blah. There was a reason for him needing to do that. Yeah. You know, maybe it was that they still weren't being fully accepted and it was for the good, for the greater good. He was yeah. trying to get his, you know, village of people accepted by the locals so that they could live peacefully yeah. and like they could all inhabit that area. And, mm. I just think that sometimes we poke into things that there's just not really necessarily a reason to poke into. 
Like, and, you know what? It's a big stone that's got some really cool stuff written on it. Right. Let's just take it for what it's worth. What's and go, the harm in it being real? Right. What's the harm in right. it being real? Like, why? Yeah. Sometimes I think that the, the skepticism in things is just not necessary. It's not. You just know? knock it off with the just skepticism. Just knock it off. Leave Olaf and his family alone. Yeah, they didn't do nothing to you like, unless you live in Minnesota. Yeah. Um, however, I will tell you that in hindsight, in years, the AVM runestone, the one you were talking about, has been proven that it was a hoax. Yeah, that one was just carved inside of a rock. Yeah, that was students that carved yeah. it. And um, it was magical students of the thing that they were looking for. Yes, Come on. that we're trying to prove. Well, that was our first weird Wednesday. It's some some weird stuff. And now, like, anytime I'm in Minnesota, I'm going to go and try and track this thing down so I can see it in real life. Not hard to find. They got a whole museum for I it. I know. And it's, you know, th there's so much cool stuff that we can find out about that's here that we could actually just go see, like, anytime. Here's going to be the weird thing, hmm. is that if your tour magically just puts you in Minnesota the day this comes out. it's It doesn't. We're not going to Minnesota. Not a big Latin market in Minnesota? You'd be amazed. We could go to any corner of the earth with those two and sell out an arena. Oh, okay. No, it's just that this tour, because of the pandemic, we've stuck to... The big ones. The big ones. Yeah. And people can come to us. Come on down. <clears throat> come on down. Bring your rune stone to the next Ricky Martin show. It's show it's a mystery. I, I will look at anybody's rune stones. Easy. You're going to get a lot of rune, rune stones. Rune stones in your DMs now. <laughs> Not your stones. They have to be rune stones. Well, I enjoy Weird Wednesdays. And Me I'm, too. I like that we I'm have two themes per week. Me too. It's kind of fun. And, and the, the weekly wrap up, the weekly warm up. I mm -hmm. like that. I wouldn't mind one more. I don't. I know. still want to do Murder Mondays. I, I do too. I just don't want to do an anthology. We'll figure this out off air. Hey, folks. Thanks for watching. Tell us your favorite rune. Don't ruin this episode. Done. You already done it. Okay. You already done it. All right, guys. Tomorrow is Edgar tomorrow. Allen Poe. Edgar, Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. What's his? What's that thing that he said? The crow, the, right? The raven. The raven. The raven. The raven. The um, raven. We'll see you tomorrow for Edgar Allan Poe. Two weird things in a row, guys. See. You. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>